Today I'm going to talk about my research in uh, Aza Buddha P development and um, that can self-assemble into liposomes for optical cancer imaging. So to begin, I want to talk about nanoparticles and nanoparticle design. As we know, nanoparticles are commonly used as nanocarrier in which they can deliver drugs or imaging agent into the disease site. With that being the case, uh, nanoparticles are often designed with this strategy known as the all-in-one design, where a nanoparticle can be loaded uh, with a drug or imaging agents, or they can be uh, conjugated or labeled on the surface. These strategies can be commonly seen in both soft or hard nanoparticles, such as liposomes and gold nanoparticles. However, this strategy has its own downfall. This, the nature of uh, all-in-one nanoparticles often require multi-step synthesis, and that can lead to more complex purification, and as a result, you can get a more heterogeneous um, population. That can really significantly um, increase the difficulty for scaling up and making these nanoparticles harder to reproduce. With that being the case, there are a different strategy that uh, we're currently looking into, and that is known as the one for all uh, strategies, where the drug and the imaging agent itself is part of the nanoparticle building blocks, and they can self-assemble into nanoparticles. This method is a lot more simple, and this simplicity um, of the strategies allowed uh, easier translations uh, for clinical applications. One thing you can do is synthesize a different nano building block, and those building blocks uh, with the different drugs or imaging agents can give rise to a lot of different um, modality for uh, imaging or therapeutic purposes. And for me, my interest is with this Aza Buddha P compound. It is a near infrared uh, chromophore that has some outstanding um, optical properties. Aza Buddha P generally has a near infrared absorption and emission. And um, it can also be modified with different moieties uh, in the different position. Uh, generally, they have very, very high uh, fluorescent quantum yields for near, near infrared uh, dye. As especially, they also have uh, excellent photostability that is not commonly seen uh, in near infrared dye. And my mission, therefore, is to put these Aza Buddha P molecules into a one for all nanoparticle. And in order to do that, the first thing I did was to synthesize an Aza Buddha P building block. To do so, I went through a series of uh, reactions where I can modify the uh, phenolic ring of these Aza Buddha P's and conjugate it to a C16 phospholipid chain. This results in an Aza Buddha P lipid, and this Aza Buddha P lipid can be then self assembled into liposomes, uh, which we're calling here Buddha P-somes. And through using uh, the free thaw extrusion method, I was able to screen uh, different formulations of this Buddha P-som and ultimately um, optimize a formulation that only requires three components, which is the Aza Buddha P lipid, the, the DSP PEG 2000, and cholesterol. This Buddha P were found to have some very interesting properties. First of all, we can see on the uh, left-hand corner, uh, that that's the absorption spectrum, where we can find these intact bodipisomes having a absorption at 700 uh, nanometers. Uh, but also we can see that there is an increase in absorptivity, and this phenomenon is known as J-arrogation. And in the meantime, we can also see that the, these particles are highly fluorescent quench, with a fluorescent quenching efficiency up to 99%. On the other hand, we have the colloidal properties of these nanoparticles. These nanoparticles were found to be uh, homogeneously distributed. And uh, through the TM images, we can see that these nanoparticles has a spherical and unilamellar structures uh, of around 120 nanometers. This is also consistent with our DLS result. As I mentioned, uh, the optical phenomenon known as J arrogation, this is something that can be also observed for um, in the literature. However, uh, J arrogation generally are not particularly stable, making the application in biomedical imaging uh, much, much more difficult. 
We found that these bodipisomes has outstanding optical uh, uh, properties, and this state this J aggregation was proven to be very stable. In which um, we further investigated the reason why these J aggregation was so stable. Uh, to do that, we have different percentage dye loading uh, of those different nanoparticles, and we vary the temperature um, in which the transition temperature will be expected. We found that there is no dramatic differences between um, uh, the changes of temperature to its optical properties. This suggested to us that um, these Budapi were behaving more like a dimer than an oligomer in this J aggregation form in which when we increase the temperature, there is a phase transition, these Bodipi molecules stay associated uh, very strongly and do not get disrupted up on the, the change of uh, the phases. And this is also likely to result in phase separation. Uh, these dimer were further supported by our CD spectrum, where we can see the intact particles has only a very small exciton chirality, uh, which suggests that these are more likely to be dimers than oligomers. With those very interesting optical properties, uh, we wanted to further investigate the uh, potentials in optical cancer imaging. So what we did here was we had a PC-free orthotopic prostate tumor model in which we injected intravenously uh, with this uh, bodipisome uh, formulations. Uh, and at 24 hours post-injection, we we're able to capture both photoacoustic imaging and fluorescent imaging. Although those two different imaging modalities uh, counteract each other uh, in terms of its fundamental nature, we believe that with the bodipisome, uh, there are populations that, uh, that remains intact when it um, get accumulated in the tumor, while there are some that are disrupted. And with the intact particle being still very much fluorescently quenched, it enabled um, photoacoustic imaging, while some disrupted uh, nanoparticles would result in the recovery of these fluorescence, giving us a very strong fluorescent imaging as shown here for in our in vivo model. With this being the case, we now have a single nanoparticle that is capable to do dual uh, optical imaging modalities. And this is very uh, inspiring result for us. And to conclude, I want to emphasize on how important it is to look into uh, different uh, nano, nanoparticle building blocks and how these nanoparticle building blocks enable us to uh, formulate and generate new nanoparticles and materials that would give us intrinsic property that we would not otherwise expect. And this, in the example of azobodipi lipid and bodipi some, have shown us that it is possible to obtain two different imaging modalities um, within one nanoparticle. And this the nanoparticle design strategy can really be um, really change the kind of paradigm of nanoparticle design and how we perceive um, in terms of what a nanoparticle should be. So with that, uh, this is I would like to thank a lot of um, the lab members and the funding agencies that has funded and supported this project. Um, I was very lucky to be working with a lot of talented scientists and engineers from different backgrounds. And um, here are the, um, my lab, and I would really like to thank them uh, for their support. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Uh, this study has been published, and here's a QR code for the published articles. If you would like to get in touch with me uh, and talk a little bit more about this project, uh, you're also welcome, and you can find my information through LinkedIn. Thank you, and um, I'll take any questions. Um, Missy, I'm curious, uh, did you do any exploration into pharmacokinetics or acute toxicity of this lipid? Uh, yes, we did. Um, let me share, oh, can I share screen again? We definitely did some acute toxicity studies um, because uh, it is important that the liposome uh, remain uh, very, um, safe uh, and non-toxic. Um, and so what we did here is we did some uh, blood count and, um, and liver function tests in which we found that uh, there was no uh, acute toxicity over a two-week period um, with the mice that is injected with a higher dose of these protopisomes. 
Uh, and at the same time, we've also uh, done some work on the uh, histology to show that there's no uh, adverse effect that can be observed through those uh, histology slices. And as well as uh, the, the safety aspect, we also looked into the pharmacokinetics, in which we found that the bodipisome has um, a relatively long uh, circulating half-life of around uh, almost 11 hours. Great. Um, and is there any potential of using the azobotapy lipid in other nanoparticles? Uh, yeah, so the azobotapy lipid itself um, is uh, a building block, and essentially any nanoparticle that uses a lipid um, as its uh, building block could also utilize azobotapy lipid um, for that purposes too. So. For example, um, such as um, HDLs, which often require a lipid shell, that could be uh, replaced with azobotapy lipid, and we might see some very interesting properties, uh, or it could also be used for different kind of tracking progress with uh, um, fluorescence or photoacoustic in general. Excellent. Thank you.